What's up guys, Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Dev Pro Duel video in Ranked, and this time I'm going to be playing with the Mermel Atlantean deck. Specifically, a build that got top 64 at Euros this past weekend. This build is a uh, very, it's not what I would consider like anything close to standard, even though it does have a lot of, you know, standard components in it. It does have things like Aqua Spirit and Mermel Abyssmander. It's playing the Interrupted Kaiju Slumber Engine. It's playing Hand Traps. It's playing all this in one. Um, a lot of people that have been trying to play the Mermel deck as of lately have gone to more of the dark filled version that has, sometimes it has the Interrupted Kaiju Slumber Engine in it, but then other than that, like that, it usually has stuff like um, Gorzes, Undyne, Undyne, uh, eh, I can't speak, Undyne and Controller and Allure of Darknesses for extra draw power and stuff like that. Uh, things of that nature, uh, but this build does not actually go for any of those. This build actually goes for a slightly different approach, and it actually has a card in it that is actually very interesting in the form of Mermail Abyssmander. Now, for those of you that don't know what this card is, this card is just a standard bit of a Mermail support that's never been played in the past, and its effect is very simple. Its effect is you can banish this card from your graveyard to activate one of these effects. Increase the levels of all Mermail monsters you control currently by one, or increase the level of all Mermail monsters you control currently by two. So, you usually only use the effect to increase them by one, but what that allows you to do is that allows you to have a first turn play that is uh, involving either Teus Dragoons or Teus Diva, and what that allows you to do is it allows you to summon Moulin Glaze, take two cards out of their hand, put a uh, Bismander in Graveyard, after, you know, resolving Diva for Neptibus and doing all that, you make Tatsunoko, you drop Moulin Glaze, and then you have Teus on board with a Megalo. And what you do is you use Abyssmander and Grave, and you make Teus and Megalo both level 8s, and you overlay with the Teus and the Moulin Glace into Titanic Galaxy. And then you're able to also synchro with Tatsunoko and a card in your hand, typically, um, into like Clearwing. And so what you end up having is you take two cards out of their hand with Moulin Glace, you make a Harbinger to negate a spell, and then you also have Mizuchi on Megalo left over to also negate a spell, and then you have Clear Wing, which can negate a monster effect, specifically in the Cosmo or Monarch matchups. So there is that. It's a very, it's a very nice little, interesting little tidbit of uh, things that you're able to do because it's actually only a two-card investment, being Teus Dragoons or Teus Diva. It's actually really, really cool, and it's something that uh, I had not considered a uh, potential option for the Mermel deck to employ. But the deck still does like to go second. The deck still prefers to go second blind. Uh, very rarely will you actually go first with this deck, uh, but when you do go first, that is something neat to perform and to know about. But ultimately, I feel like this deck just isn't the right call for the format because of the fact that, you know, you go second, and going second is really hard in this format, specifically since there's a lot of decks that Maxi is particularly not great against. Um, stuff like that, but ultimately, like, the deck saw some success, and I'm going to be testing this build out for video purpose, so... Let's just jump right into it. All right, so let's see what we're dealing with here. I'm not too concerned with winning rock, paper, scissors when I play this deck because almost everyone on Dev Pro allows you to go second, and that is the main function of this deck. You always want to go second with this deck. Going first with this deck is not really that big of an option, although this deck is very strong at going first, it's particularly because of the fact that it does allow you to have plays where you open like Teus Dragoons, and that takes two cards out of your opponent's hand with Moulin Glace, and then also lets you end with like Clear Wing and Hope Harbinger. Stuff like that. But uh, particularly, I think this deck is honestly very weak. I'm pretty sure the only reason I'm going to win this game is probably because I'm playing its Fluffles, uh, to be 100% <laughs> real here. Um, I'm pretty sure that the only reason, if I do win, the reason would be because I'm playing against Fluffles and I have Neptibus Instant Fusion. Uh, so I've got, I've definitely got a lot of follow-up that I can do with uh, with this hand in terms of molding things around. Now there is no marksman in this build, which is actually kind of scary because I've got to respect whatever that card is. Whatever that card is, I have to respect it because the most I could probably do is maybe Trishula it, but that would be very hard as well. I'd like have to search Diva off of this Dragoons, discard it, and then do like some other nonsense, um, which is not something that I really am too big a fan of doing. Although. I could just immediately instant fusion and go dweller here, get a search for D.Va. I could play, well I have to, if I did the D.Va play I'd have to be able to instant fusion Nord and it back, so that's actually not going to be something that's overly good. If I had Sadus in my deck list, then that would be, that would make it a bit easier on me, but as it stands, this is going to be a possible problem <laughs> uh, if this, uh, if this becomes, uh, a trap that actually matters, essentially. Um, if it's actually something that matters, that's gonna suck. It's gonna absolutely be terrible, because this is Mizuchi. If it was Sadus, I wouldn't be worried about it. I would throw Sadus on it and it would be great. It would be grand, even. 
Uh, what is in my graveyard? I've got those three, so I've got two, which means if I search Megalo here, I won't be able to drop it unless I do Instant Fusion um, for Dweller, um, which is definitely possible. Or I could use this, tribute this off for double attacks as well. So I can get multiple searches off of Dragoons, so I will search for a Megalo here. Because I'll Instant Fusion into Dweller, just because Dweller is the only like rank 4 in this deck. There's only three rank 4s in this deck, and it's double Dweller and Emerald, which I'm not necessarily in agreement with, because... There's a lot of rank 7s in here. Um, this deck list is very strange. Okay, he's just surrendering. Okay, so I guess we'll just go into another one because the video is really short. Okay, so um, hopefully, okay, I get to win Rock, Paper, Scissors again. That's great. Uh, is this the same person? I have no idea. I didn't even pay attention. Um, okay, so no hand traps. That's unfortunate, but I do have Neptibus, which is great. I have Megalo, which is also great, and I have Surface, which is also kind of okay. That gives me a rather large safety net against the potential, like, things I could be dealing with, like Monarch Stormforth, stuff like that. Ah, Satellar Knight. Alright. I'm okay with this, sort of. Ish. Oh, actually, uh, it's a lot of trap cards I might have to be dealing with. And Rivalry? Rivalry, actually, I keep having this, like, hard-coded stigma in my mind that Rivalry is just auto-winning its Mermails. But that is old Mermail. That is old, like, rank 4 Mermail. In today's day and age, Mermel are very, very not vulnerable to these threats um, in the form of you have uh, almost everything you're putting on the board is Sea Serpent related. Uh, so this deck is actually a lot more streamlined and can play through Rivalry very, very well. And Neptibus also sends Heavy Infantry, which Heavy Infantry pops Rivalry. I just have this really hard-coded like part of my mind that's just like, oh, Rivalry, stay away. Playing Mermel, stay away from it. But that's just, that's just something that's existed in my head ever since like 2012, 2013, and 2014 playing the Mermel deck. Uh, but as it stands, I'm pretty sure this Neptibus is going to get alpha which is perfectly fine. Uh, that's absolutely <laughs> very, very much something that I'm okay with, because the Dragoon still happens. Like, the Dragoon still gets its effect unless there's a strike down here, uh, in which case, that's fine. So what I get to do is I get to actually use, I get to use Megalo to add Neptibus. Yeah. So I'm going to use Megalo, add Neptibus, I'm going to discard um, cards for this and do that in that area. So what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to use Dragoons off of the Neptibus that I'm about to use from this. At least I think that's the way I want this to go. Um, there are two engrave and it's literally just two waters, so I'm going to try and figure this out in a way that works well enough. I could get Diva and summon it back off surface, that is definitely something that could also happen. Uh, let's just start going for it, let's just see what we can do here. So we'll do these and summon Megalo. Uh, Neptibus will bring back Dragoons, and then I'll be able to use Dragoons, tribute that off uh, to um, to special summon something. If I got another Dragoon search, I could have easily just brought back the uh, heavy infantry there, and then uh, been able to do some other things. But as it stands, I just have to do it in this area in this way. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this is the way it has to be done. So that will get that. And I'm very upset this isn't just another water monster. Uh, it would very, very much benefit me if it was. But as it stands, there's no marksman in this deck either, which is kind of triggering me to a degree. But what I can do is, ah, ah, ooh, here's a play. I can actually use this, tribute the Dragoons, and I can get a search for D.Va, and I can surface heavy infantry back and get an additional normal summon on D.Va. There we go. I knew this was all going to come together in my head eventually. Uh, it's definitely not as ideal as it could be, but this has two attacks on it. I wish... this probably should just be Sadus uh, at this point. Even though this is better going first, Sadus is better in this deck without Marksman. At least in my very, very vacuum like mindset. I'm taking no other factors into account. Uh, but yeah, so we'll activate Surface here. We'll try to bring this back, and then this will allow us to normal summon D.Va. And at the very least, I will be able to make a, like, a Cat Shark potentially. Um, let's see, if I get I can get uh, Neptibus out, I can get the Neptibus out of the deck, or I can get this out of the deck. Um, and if I get this out of the deck, I'll be able to overlay these into Cat Shark. Uh, I'll be able to synchro these into Armory Arm. Uh, Armory Arm plus Megalo here is just an OTK. But I have I have three engraved, so if I synchro into Armory Arm, that will put me at four, or it'll put me at five, which will allow me to move in Glaze. So that seems like the ideal. Um, but then I could also, I could also just make Leo. What I could do is I get Neptibus, I can make Tatsunoko, drop Moulin Glace, and then make Leo. Um, so there's that. 
So potentially that's what we'll go with. Yeah, let's let's let's, let's just do that. We'll leave this heavy infantry chilling in defense mode. Um, it doesn't really matter to me that terribly much. I will be able to summon this Mulan Glace and then make Leo with these two cards, and then that plus the Megalo plus this Mulan Glace is an OTK. He has two cards in hand because of the fact that Mulan Glace uh, will take these out. So he's doing this to get the Neb. Uh, interesting. So card of demise. He's playing card of demise tellers, which fine. And then these allow this allows him to search Altair. So if he gets another turn, then that would be you know a problem for me. Uh, but as it stands, I'm pretty sure I can just kill him here. Um, use monster in hand. Yes. There's no other. Well, there was an option. There was the megalo. Um, so I'll do this Leo. I'll activate this onto the. Did he just leave? I think he just left. <laughs> Uh, Dev Pro either crashed or he just left, and knowing my history with this, that means he just left. So uh, we'll go with that. Uh, in fact, damn it, I, w I can't even check a replay to see what this card is. But if he just absolutely rage quit it out, because both the yeah both the timers aren't going down, and I can't interact with anything, um, I can't. Oh, I can do these. I can do the hotkeys. Noted. You can use the hotkeys when Dev Pro crashes. That's interesting. All right, well, I guess I'm just going to call it there because, like, if that card was nothing, then I just absolutely won because Mizuchi on Megalo would have been 32 times 2, which is 64. Then there's the Leo, and then there's the Mulan Glace, and these are attacking over a Deneb. He has an Altair in hand, so literally the only card I'm worried about is whatever that back row is, but if that card is nothing that stops me from killing him, then that's not something that I need to worry about. Now, part of me wants to think that was another Stellar Nova Alpha because he called Haunted Deneb, in response to me using Mulan Glaces effect, but he just didn't have a window to activate it. If that was if that was true, if that's the case, if that was another Telenova Alpha, then he definitely should have just called the Haunted onto Neb right away, and he would be able to stop anything. As soon as he used the first Telenova Alpha, he should have definitely just called the Haunted to Neb, if that was another one. But, I mean, little bits of technical play might get you in the end, if that's what that indeed was. But if it was like something like Drowning Mirror Force or something like that, then it, then it would have definitely ended me. But because of the fact that he apparently looks like he raged out, that's not going to be something that it would have been because, I mean, there's no reason for the timers to stop and everything to happen unless your opponent lost connection. At least in the history of Dev Pro, that's all it is. But anyway, I'm going to call it here. That's the that's the end of this video. That's going to be it. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description of my Facebook pages. If you want to check those out, definitely go for it. That's what they are there for. Other than that, if you want to support me, click on ads on my videos and disabling ad blocking and view my videos is the best way to do so. It greatly helps me out. I cannot express how much I would appreciate it. If you have an ad block enabled, please take a few seconds out of your day to remove the ad block. Front, or turn the ad block off, refresh the video, click an ad or two, and then put it back on when you're done. It takes seconds out of your day, it takes no money out of your pocket, and it helps me out more than you, I can ever express to you, and you would have my eternal gratitude because it really, really, really helps me out a lot. But other than that, that is all for this video, as I've already said, and as always, guys, take care.